your first look at high school football scores and highlights. This is First Down Friday Night. Sponsored by Papa John's, your community health mart pharmacy, Whataburger, and B2 EDI. Now your hosts, Mo Carter, Naomi Gray, and Jonah Carp. And what's up, boys and girls? Baseball running late last night. So thanks to a short newscast, we're finally here for another episode of First Down Friday Night. I'm Mo, he's Jonah, and Jonah's going to yeah. tell us the abbreviated version of what tonight's show is called, or it, this morning's show is called. It's an elongated version. It's First Down Friday Night, first thing Saturday morning. That's F-D-F-N-F-T-S-M, right? That's it, man. Something like that. Rolls off the top. <laughs> By the way, yesterday I learned that while I do like pina coladas, I don't in fact like getting caught in the rain. Like the song, because it rained a lot. <laughs> You're right, it was a lot of rain across the Tennessee Valley, man. And look, week eight, it was full of games for region titles, and we had a few surprises. We're starting off top with this one. Look at this, Geraldine knocking off Fife by a final score of 20 to 19. What a shocker. The loss snaps the 51 game win streak for Coach Benefield's team. Fife has not lost a game since November of 2017. You want to know what happened in November 2017? About 90% of the current Fox 54 staff was not here. I was one of the ones that was still here or whatever. Jonah, where the heck were you at in November of 2017? I was a sophomore at Syracuse University. Okay. Yeah. Well, that just goes to show you, you know, how long it has been. And it's going to be interesting to see what Coach Paul Benefield and company can do when they try to bounce back. But we talked about the regional titles. So, Jonah, take it away with another game that had region title implications. Sure. Well, out in Athens tonight, East Limestone and Russellville put their unbeaten region records on the line. The winner of that contest would be crowned Region 8 champs in Class 5A. So a lot on the line. Let's head to East Limestone High School. Golden Tigers, they can smell that regional title. Fans ready for the impending downpour. More on that later. Indians with first possession, second and 23. Gage Hill, home run ball. Barrett Brown on the receiving end, a beauty to get across midfield. Same drive, third and long. Hill throws a strike down the sideline, intercepted by Gavin Slay. Gets it back across midfield. Russellville trying to take advantage. Connor Warhurst gets the carry, shot out of a cannon. Flies past everyone, gone. Golden Tigers break the ice as the rain starts really coming down hard. So much so that on the ensuing kickoff, Eric Petrowski, back to return, went right through his mitts. Bouncing ball recovered by the Golden Tigers. Boy, look at that rain. And it was affecting the game. Russellville trying to extend its lead. Hand off to Warhurst again. Why not? Finds pay dirt to tack on some more insurance. Golden Tigers, they didn't hold back. Let's show you the final from this one. Russellville goes on to win it by a final of 42 nothing. Golden Tigers are your 2021 Region 8 Class 5A champions. Next week, Russellville hosts Lee. East Limestone hosts Sylvania. Meanwhile, at Madison, homecoming for Bob Jones. D'Angelo Davenport crowned homecoming king. Congratulations to Mr. Davenport. Patriots hosting Grissom. Fans wearing pink for breast cancer awareness. All Bomb Jones early. 14-0 near the end of the first half. Right on top of the goal line on that third down. Rayshon Hardy couldn't jam it into Brody Cooper. Now fourth down and Hardy says, yeah, I'll just take that myself. Bulldozes forward with 20 seconds left in the half. 21-0 Patriots at halftime. Into the second half, Tigers pinned deep. Third and 33, what play would you call? They call a QB keeper, Tristan Graham, nowhere to go. So on the punt, oh no. this is what happened. Punter pinned and tries to escape the army of Patriots. Couldn't really do it. So Grissom, or Grissom gives the ball back to the Patriots and Rayshon Hardy does it again himself. He was one of our MVPs earlier this year and that's why when the final horn sounded, this is what the scoreboard looked like. Bob Jones, they went on to win it by an even larger margin, 56-0. Next week, Bob Jones at Austin. Grissom hosts Florence Mo. All right, Jonah, let's stay in Class 7A. Bob Jones, of course, is on the heels of arch rival James Clements. The Patriots needed the Jets to lose not only last night, but also next week for a shot at the region title. But a win on Friday would give James Clements no worse than a share of the region title as they took on Sparkman. Both James Clements and Sparkman coming out slow in the, um, Friday's game, and the main reason was this. Look at this heavy wow. rain. I mean, the rain is coming down so hard, it's like a Missy Elliott song. You can't stand the rain, right? 
right there. Well, in this situation, Jamonte Spencer gets the ball up the gut. He is breaking tackles everywhere, but then he coughs up the football. James Clemens recovers. That's Garen Bell coming up with the ball as there's a scramble right there in the rain. Now look, the student section, they were soaked, but they were loving it. And just to let you know, that's how hard the rain was coming down. Just with the ball now, Gio Lopez rolls out and tosses one deep down the field, comes just out of the reach of Kamari Pittman. So the Jets passing attack, it just wasn't working. So hey, let's commit to the run. Dante Snodgrass following his block. He's patient, cuts back across the field, and he is going into the end zone for a long touchdown run. The Jets would actually go for two, and they were up 15 to seven at that point. Let's check out your final score from Harvest on Friday, and it was all James Clemens. They win a squeaker by final 21 to 15. So with that victory, they claim at least a share of the region title. Next week, James Clemens takes on Albertville, while Huntsville will travel over to Sparkman. Down I-65, we go to Coleman now. The Bearcats playing host to the Golden Eagles of Athens. Coleman, they would strike first. Ryan Skinner rolling out, and he has a wide open man, and he makes the catch and will walk into the end zone. Jonah right here. They put Coleman up seven to nothing. But back come the Golden Eagles. They got a pretty special quarterback who's one heck of an athlete, and Jaden Jude. He'll run the play fake right here and then throw a quick strike to Caden Dumas down the seam right there. Dumas gets it all the way down into Coleman territory. Now the drive would stall and the Golden Eagles have to settle for a field goal. Lucas Rodriguez comes on and boots one in for 30 yards out. That makes it seven to three Coleman. Now it will remain that way all the way until the fourth quarter when Coleman connects on another field goal of their own. Garrett Mobley coming through to make it 10 to three. Let's check out your final score from Coleman as the Bearcats go on to win by a final of 10 to three. Next week, Coleman will travel out the muscle shows while Athens will play host to Decatur. 10 to 3, the final of that one. Of course, the Fox 54 sports team is on social media. A few things have changed. Follow Mo at Mo Carter, Fox 54. Follow Naomi at Naomi Gray TV. You can follow me, Jonah, at Jonah Carp TV. Send us a tweet. We may read it later on the air. Yeah, and remember, we're up all night with this one, everyone. Now, with a victory on Friday, the Gunnersville Wildcats could claim the Region 7 title in Class 5A, but it would not come easy against county rival Boaz. That's our varsity game of the week, and it's coming up next. Hey, welcome back to First Down Friday Night on this Saturday morning. The theme of the evening during week eight seems to be region championships. We already saw Russellville take down East Limestone to claim that championship, and so did James Clements. Yeah, Gunnersville and Boaz, they both had their eyes on the regional prize. They met tonight with first place on the line, and Naomi Gray traveled out there and has more with our Varsity Game of the Week. Well, the Gunnersville Wildcats made things look easy tonight as it snatched its back-to-back -back Class 5A Region 7 title in a matchup versus Boaz. The Wildcats have now clinched the playoffs and will more than likely have home advantage throughout. But let's take a look at how they got things done. The top five ranked Gunnersville Wildcats walking in on a six game win streak. Opening drive, Cole McCarty tosses it out to Logan Pate. He breaks right down the sidelines for an explosive run, but all get called back for holding. Wildcats were unable to recover on the drive. They'll settle for a field goal here and the early three nothing lead. Ensuing drive, Pirates on the hunt. Tyler Pierce hands it off to Elijah Jacobs. He breaks out for the open field, follows his blocks before getting pushed out of bounds. The hefty gain will later set the Pirates up on the goal line. Boaz with the trick formation here, but look who pops out like a bunny out of a hat. Right into the end zone, Jacobs picks up six for the eventual 7-3 Pirates lead. But the Wildcats wouldn't stay down for long. Cole McCarty drops back before launching the deep ball out to Brandon Fussell. Now that's what you call an open man. The 69-yard reception is good for a Wildcats 10-7 lead. This one will go down to the nitty-gritty, but the Wildcats will get it done. Seven straight wins and more importantly, back-to-back -back Region 7 champions. 45-17 is your final score. Swinging a few minutes down the road to Albertville, Aggies hosting the Austin Black Bears. Austin up three scores with minutes left in the half, but wait, there's more. Quarterback 
Douglas Deere Young goes play action but hails it to the heavens and Maurice Jones takes a 98 yard trip down the glory road to stamp another Austin score for a 28 nothing lead to the locker room. And that wouldn't be the last we see of Jones. Opening half kickoff, ball falls right into Jones' hands and he dodges left and takes off to the races, then breaks right to the open path in the end zone. He's gone. Black Bears up, 35 zilch. And Aggies will try to do a little something in the third quarter. Quarterback Hayden Howard goes for the keeper with an open hole, stretch to the secondary before picking up the first down. Couple drives later, Albertville inching closer, fourth and goal. Hayden hands it off, but the Aggies wouldn't stand a chance. Zamari Bell shuts down the run, and the Black Bears win it 42 to zip. Next week, Austin will host Bob Jones, while Albertville will travel to James Clemens. And as for the Class 5A Region 7 champions, Gunnersville, where they're going to go ahead and travel to West Point, while Boaz has a bye. That's all I have for you guys here in Gunnersville. Naomi Gray, Fox 54 Sports. Brooks unbeaten this year. They win the region with a victory. Central Florence trying to play spoilers. Crazy finish in this one. Lines with a 21-20 edge in the fourth quarter. Banging on the door of the end zone. Kyler Merks, the human trampoline. Leaps across the goal line for the score. 27-20. Brooks, but wait a second, there's a flag. Personal foul, touchdown stands, but the point after attempt pushed back 15 yards. Lions go for two, Merck's running laps in the backfield. Another flag flies in, completes the strike to Newt Wood. Doesn't count. Do it again. From the 30 yard line, here we go. Merck's heaves it, gets a ton of air under it. Keenan Jones almost has it can't hang on, so the Wildcats only trail by seven instead of nine. Central Florence can tire take the lead on the next drive, give to Hunter Palmer, scoots into the secondary, big game for the first, inside the red zone. Wildcats threatening, fourth and one, handoff to Jamal Ingram, does everything in his power to keep the drive alive. Defense makes the enormous stop, turnover on downs. Game not over yet. Lions back on offense. Ball at midfield. Fourth and five. They go for it and go for it all. Merks to the moon. Wood with the grab just shy of the end zone. A risky call pays off for Brooks. Why go for it there, coach? I don't know. <laughs> we'll be honest with you. Uh, it's one of those situations, I guess, like last week. You just got to feel it. I, I trust our guys. I love them. Uh, they're, they're battlers. So they, they know what to do in those situations. And I just told them, I said, it's on y'all. Y'all got to take it. So they did, and they made a great play. And the Lions can sniff glory after that. Right back to Wood, this time on the run, flexing the speed for the capper. Brooks wins 33-20. Here's Coach Brad Black on how sweet this region title clinching victory feels. It was great. You know, anytime you get that county rivalry plus a region type game, great environment. Appreciate our fans and everybody being here. Uh, just an unbelievable environment. Last night at Milton Frank Stadium, uh, Mate Jemison celebrating homecoming. Here's a homecoming king and queen. Congrats to both of them. Jaguars with the ball early. Kel Woods keeps it, and that guy is fast as he outruns the entire Devils defense. Jags on top, seven to nothing. More from the Jags. They're knocking on the door once again. Wood hands it off to Malachi Montgomery on the speed sweep. He's coming into your living room as he scores right here to put the Jaguars now on top, 14 to nothing. And thanks to that score, Jaguar fans in the stands along with the bands are getting down, as you yeah. see right there. Now the Jags trying to add to the lead. Jonathan Jones on the speed sweep. Andrew Cook. Tugs on his arm, causes a fumble. Brayling Dane will recover for the Red Devils. However, they would not capitalize on uh, this one. And guess what? I can just tell you this. It was all May Jemison on Thursday night. 54 to 21 was the final score. Kel Woods had over 300 all-purpose yards and a total of five touchdowns. Big nominee, or at least an early nominee for the MVP of the week. Next week, Lawrence County will take on Brewer, while May Jemison will take on Ardmore. All right, well, Colbert Heights visiting Lauderdale County, senior night for the Tigers, and a stampede of cheerleaders incoming. Fun game at home for you. Count That's how many down. times Jonah can get way too close to the action in this game. That's number one. Here's a tip, interception. Pass from Dakota Vaughn is picked off by Ethan Hamm. Nice grab by the linebacker. Tigers trying to capitalize, ensuing drive to give to Jalen Bird, and look out again. Slips right through a tackle along the sideline. 
tripped up near the 20. Same drive now into the second quarter. Fourth down. Had to throw it away. Yikes. Oh. <laughs> Not a receiver, dude. Wildcats trying to get it going. Vaughn zips it over the middle. That's picked off by Joseph Schuyler Trucker. Big return. Lauderdale County in good position to score. And the handoff goes right back to Bird. And why not? Reaches across the goal line. Officials have to discuss it. Eventually rule a touchdown. Tigers up 7-0. Off and running after that. Later in the second, Fuqua. He goes for the long ball. And connects with Brody Lentz. Let's check out your final from Lauderdale County. Lauderdale goes on to win it by a final of 35 to seven. Next week, Lauderdale County, they're off. Colbert Heights hosts East Lawrence. All right, out of the smoke comes the Rebels of West Morgan. They hosted Wilson on Thursday evening in Trinity. On the Rebels' first possession, they stick to the run game. And with the good vision comes Jalen Fletcher, watching he slips a few tackles, picks up first down yardage. Then we've got a swing pass that goes out to Caden Cook. He makes the catch, and then he makes a nice pickup for another first down. And then it's Connor Dillard weaving his way through the defense, breaking tackles, and takes it all the way into the end zone for a score. And next thing you know, the Rebels, they're on top, seven to nothing. Now the Rebels defense, they came through pretty good as well. Sacking Evan Witt on third down, and Wilson would be forced to punt. Yeah, here's the sack right there, everyone. You always got to have a good defensive front to get that kind of pressure. So eventually, it'll be Rebels ball again. Connor Dillard right up the gut for another touchdown. 14 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Let's check out your final score from out there in Trinity. Wes Morgan goes on to win by final 38 to 8. Next week, Brooks will take on Wilson while Wes Morgan, they'll travel out to Rogers. Alrighty, let's uh, give you a moment to stretch and pour a cup of coffee. More games around the region coming your way in a bit. Welcome back to First Down Friday night. First thing Saturday morning, the Randolph Raiders host Westminster on Friday. Westminster gets the ball first. Henry Claunch takes the handoff, but he fumbles and it's recovered by Randolph's Roan Campbell. Raiders set up with good field position. Andrew Hunter, he throws it left to Nick Strong, and he jukes a few men and takes it inside the five. Then it's a handoff to David Clary. He takes it up the middle for the score. The Raiders go up seven zip early. And then after a quick three and out by Westminster, David Clary will do what he does best. Takes it again, back up the middle, and that's a big game. Pass the secondary, brought down inside the red zone. Andrew Hunter, he then goes back to Nick Strong, and why not? Down the left sideline, takes it in for the score. Raiders up by 14. Let's take a look at your final score. 44-20, Randolph takes the victory over Westminster. Next week, Madison County at Westminster, and Randolph at D.A. Arma. All right, staying in that same region, we go to Discovery Middle now. St. John Paul II hosting North Jackson. Chiefs up 6 to nothing early, knocking on the door. Macklin Guest following his big offensive line dives into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. They are now on top 14 to nothing. The Falcons on the offensive now, facing fourth down and seven. Don Zana steps back to pass, and he can't find anyone, so he's just going to take off and run it. And guess what? He picked up the first down right here, just how they just drew, up, drew it up on the sidelines. That drive would stall, so Steven Taylor comes on for a 38-yard field goal attempt. It goes up, but it doinks the upright. No good right there. 14 to nothing steal. North Jackson on top. Let's check out your final from that part of Madison as North Jackson goes on the win by final of 27 to 9. Next week, the Chiefs, they will host New Hope, while St. John Paul II, they will travel over to Madison Academy. All right, everyone, you know the deal. The partnership between the Fox 54 sports team and Pro Football Hall of Famer Walter Jones, it continues to roll on this season. And uh, we will honor another deserving student athlete with the B2EDI Walter Jones Offensive Lineman of the Week Award. The Bob Jones Patriots got off to a rocky start in the 2021 season as they dropped their first two games by one possession. But by week three, things started to change. After that, the Patriots offense went on a tear, averaging 38 points per game, and the success can be credited to the play of the men up front on that offensive line. It honestly was just teamwork. We couldn't have done it with anyone else. I couldn't have done it without my quarterback and running backs. They, they trusted us, so we trusted them. 
anchoring that O-line for the red, white, and blue is Maddox Sunderman. The six foot four, 300 pound offensive lineman can be seen playing just about every position on that front for the Patriots. When the Patriots need a pick me up, you can always count on Sunderman to lead by example on that offensive front. I don't think we could do anything without the O-line. It's uh, we do have some young ones, but they're they're probably the, like they have the most heart on the team. They're always, they're actually honestly push most of us. For his efforts, the Fox 54 sports team, along with B2 EDI, selected Maddox Sunderman as the new week's winner of the Walter Jones Offensive Lineman of the Week. Not only is Maddox a leader on the football field, he also leads by example with his second love, wrestling. Maddox performs well on the mat and he's preparing the next generation of wrestlers at Bob Jones's feeder school. Our O-line coach is actually the wrestling coach, so he got me into this during eighth grade. And it's, uh, it's always helped with the footwork or being explosive on the line. We have a club wrestling normally, uh, I think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. So I normally will go down there during after practice or off season. I'll go down there and help work and I'll also get better there too. So congratulations to Maddox Sunderman once again for taking home this award. He will be joined by the other offensive linemen of the week next month at the year in banquet. Last week, Hartzell took down Muscle Shoals in a 52-35 shootout, scoring five of those touchdowns for the Tigers. Running back Rye Fletcher, who ran for 216 yards, with four of his scores coming on the ground, he added a 20-yard receiving TD, earning our latest first down Friday night MVP, brought to you by Whataburger. Ryan Fletcher has been a solid performer on that Hartsville football team that's probably going to make a very deep run in the playoffs this year. Absolutely, and one of many well-deserving candidates for our MVP throughout the season, and there have been so many great ones. Oh, absolutely, and look, if you think you saw a deserving candidate during a week eight, just make sure you either send us an email, news at rocketcitynow.com, or head over to the website, fox54.com, go to the sports page, and there's a section to nominate a Fox 54, first down Friday night, MVP of the week, which is brought to you by Whataburger. We'll announce that on Tuesday. Yes, sir. We'll send that guy out there to talk about this guy right here. You can see me. You can see my pretty face. Who wouldn't want to see that? Absolutely. Lots of great performances, especially a lot of people who found a way to help their teams win region titles tonight. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. How about Fife? Let's just talk about that again. I mean, we have to, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, like I said, Fife, they have not lost a game since 2017, and yeah. Geraldine found a way to do it. One-point victory, yeah. no matter if it's a one-point, 50-point victory, it is the end of a long streak. And now Paul Benefield and coming out to go back to the drawing board as they get ready for the bowl season. Crazy. Very, very. Didn't crazy. think it would happen. Absolutely. Here we are. Absolutely not. We'll definitely have to uh, check in on them. And also, too, their region now has a three-way tie at the top between them, Sylvania, and Geraldine. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out with only one week of region play left. Mm, exciting football coming your way. Exciting. Know what else is exciting, man? What's that? Papa John's Pizza with the I'm shakaroni, not. man. They hooked us up once again. And look, there is no pizza in here because guess what? We were on late tonight due to the ALCS. Yeah. So that means that a lot of hungry folks were in the building and we just had to make sure everybody got fed. So thank All you so time. much. Exactly. Thank you so much, Papa John, for keeping us fed here on First Down Friday night, the Saturday morning edition. <laughs> All right, everyone, we want to thank you for staying up late with us here on That Exact Show, Saturday morning style. For Jonah Carp, I'm Mo Carter, along with our good friend uh, Naomi Gray. Have yourself a great night. Get some rest. Find a way to get away from the rain because more rain is coming overnight or whatever. And we will see you next week for week nine of the high school football season. First Down Friday Night is sponsored by Papa John's, your community health mart pharmacy, Whataburger, and B2EDI.